Hey y'all. So today I'm gonna to talk about graphs of quadratic relationships. The standard form of a quadratic function is y or f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. When you graph a quadratic function, it makes this shape, which is called a parabola. If the leading coefficient is greater than zero, which just means it's positive. If A is positive, then it opens towards up. But I just say if A is positive, then it's a smiley face. See, it's smiling, happy. And if A is negative, then it's a frowny face. <laughs> whatever C is or whatever the constant is when it's in standard form, that's going to be your y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis. Now, the vertex, when it's in standard form, standard form's not really fun for the vertex. What you have to do to get the x-coordinate is negative b divided by 2a, and that gives you the x-coordinate of the vertex. And then to get the y-coordinate, whatever you got for the x-coordinate, you just plug it in for x and then do order of operations, and that'll give you the y-coordinate. And then the axis of symmetry is just this number right here. It'll be x equals whatever that is. And that's the line that cuts that parabola in half. You remember uh, symmetry lines from uh, kindergarten? Yeah, like a butterfly and it's the line that cut it in half. All right, when your parabola is happy, then the vertex is a minimum because it's the bottom. It's as low as it'll go. And when the parabola is sad, then the vertex is a maximum because that's the highest point. That's your biggest Y value is going to be the Y coordinate of the vertex. All right, and there's another form, which is called the vertex form. The vertex form is Y equals A times X minus H squared plus K. Really, the vertex form is good for nothing but the vertex. And then solving is also easier sometimes when it's in vertex form. So when it's in vertex form, HK is where the vertex is at. Now, be careful because there's a minus in here. So H is the opposite of whatever it is. So if this was minus three, then it's positive three. If it was plus three, then it's negative three because that negative is part of the formula. The axis of symmetry is just X equals H, whatever that first number in the vertex is, just like it is up here. And then if you wanted to find the Y intercept, you would have to plug in a zero for X and then use order of operations. Now, factors and roots. So, the root of a quadratic function is where it crosses the x axis. And it can have, could have no real roots. It could have one or it could have two. And most of the time, the ones we deal with, they'll have two roots, two places where it crosses the x axis. Now, they call them roots, but they also call them zeros. They call them solutions. They call them x intercepts. When you take the EOC, you might hear any of those four terms. So if m is a root of a quadratic function, then x minus m is a factor. And the little saying we use are roots are real and factors are fake. So if negative 2 is a root, so if it crossed through negative 2 on the x-axis, then one of the factors would be x plus 2. And you already did the factoring lesson. So this is just... If you knew the solutions by looking at the graph, you could write the factors. So if factoring wasn't your thing, you could use the calculator or Desmos to graph it, look at the graph, find the roots, and then the opposite of those would be your factors. All right, let's look at some examples that are um, on your lesson questions or like your lesson questions. For the first one, it says, what are the zeros of this function? And they give us a function that is factored. But remember, Roots are real, factors are fake. So instead of minus one, that means my zero or my root would be positive one. Instead of positive seven, my root would be the opposite, which is negative seven. So the zeros, roots, solutions, x-intercepts of this function are one and negative seven. If I looked at this on a graph, it would go through the x-axis at positive one and negative seven. All right, let's look at the next one. It says, find the vertex, axis of symmetry, y-intercepts, and x-intercepts of, of this function. So let's do the easy part first, the vertex. This is in vertex form. So it's just h, k. And remember, it's the opposite for the h part. So minus one means positive one. k is just it is what it is. So the vertex is at one negative nine. So the axis of symmetry would be x equals just this number right here, x equals one. 
that is the line, the vertical line that cuts my parabola perfectly in half. All right, let's solve it next. And then we'll do the y-intercept, because why not? So if we solve this, I'm gonna set it equal to zero. Zero equals x minus one squared minus nine. So I'm gonna move this nine to the other side by adding it. So we get nine equals x minus one squared. To get rid of a square, you take the square root. Now remember, if something squared equals a number, you have to consider both the positive and negative. So what I'm trying to say is, if I said x squared equals 25, X could be five, but X could also be negative five, right? Because if you square negative, what happens? It becomes positive. So for this, we have to consider both positive and negative three for that nine because it was squared, All right? And then to get rid of the minus one, you'll add one. I just like to scooch it on over to the other side. So we have one plus three, which is four, and one minus three, which is negative two. But again, you can get out your calculator or go to Desmos on your phone, uh, graph this function, put this in, y equals all that, look at the picture, and it will cross the x-axis at four and at negative two. You can also look real quick and find the y-intercept if you're looking at the graph. But the long way to find the y-intercept is to plug in a zero. So if I plug in, a, so these are the roots, or the x-intercepts, same thing. All right, to find the y-intercept, I plug in a zero. Woo so that'll be zero minus one squared minus nine. So zero minus one is negative one squared minus nine. So one minus nine is negative eight. So the y-intercept is negative eight. All right. Let's look at this one. It says, what is the axis of symmetry, the domain and range of this quadratic function shown? So remember, the axis of symmetry is gonna be the line that cuts this thing perfectly in half. So we're going back to kindergarten here. So how could I cut this shape in half? I would need a line right here, right? So the equation of this line would be x equals two. That's my axis of symmetry. And now it wants to know the domain and range. So domain is your X values. That's how far from the left to the right. It's like shaking your booty left and right. How far from the left to how far from the right. Now remember, this thing has arrows on the end. It just keeps opening up bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So the domain would be negative infinity to infinity or all the real numbers. For, for quadratic functions and for linear functions, the domain is all the real numbers. You can plug anything in, it's not gonna cause any problems. Remember, domain, you look at your X values. All right, and then for the range, you're gonna focus on your Y values. Range is from bottom to top. How low can you go to how high? So look, this is the lowest point on this parabola. It has a minimum, right? This is my minimum. And how low did it go? It went to two. And because this is a closed circle, I write two in brackets. I use parentheses with infinity because those aren't numbers, those are symbols. And then how high? Well, look, this arrow means they keep going up, 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 up. So it goes all the way up to infinity. All right, let's look at another one. It says, name two factors of the quadratic function graph below. So, all we need to do is find the roots. And remember, roots are real, factors are fake. So, the roots here are the x-intercepts, are the zeros, are the solutions, are at, right here, that's negative 1 and positive 5. So, that means my factors would be the opposite. So, that would be x plus 1 and x minus five. While we're looking at this, because it is um, so much fun to do, what would the domain of this graph be? How far from left to right? Keeps going, keeps going. Negative infinity to infinity. How about the range? How low does it go? Right here to, at negative four. And it goes on forever to positive infinity. So it has a minimum, right? It has a minimum of negative four. 
All right, what would the axis of symmetry be for this? What line would cut this in half? Right here, right? So the axis of symmetry would be x equals two. Just a little bonus, doesn't hurt. All right, you guys, I hope you have a great rest of the day.